Good evening, small groups. I'm just glad to be with you again and to be the uh, small group video teaching for you again. Uh, tonight I want to talk about whether you want to go on an adventure with God. And if you do, the answer is to focus your attention on people. Now, I remember from my childhood that I had a childhood full of adventure. Uh, my dad uh, took us on whitewater rafting and we went over waterfalls and uh, just to test whether we could make it or not over those waterfalls down at whitewater rafting. Uh, up in Washington State, we actually climbed Mount St. Helens before the mountain blew and then again after the mountain blew just for the adventure of it. Uh, for us, even our camping experiences were adventures because we just refused to ever camp if there was another person within a mile of any direction. So that means you've got to pack up and haul <laughs> and go where other people aren't going sometimes. So that always turned into an adventure. Maybe you don't have that sense of adventure in you but I promise you that when you receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, God does put a sense of adventure in you as it relates to other people. So uh, let me read from the book of Acts in chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. It's one of my favorite stories as we look at Philip, the, they call him Philip the Evangelist, going on the Lord's adventure with other people. And it says this, As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the res desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandak, the queen of e Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning. Seated on his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, I love that sense of adventure. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah and Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? Well, the man replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture that he had been reading was this. It says he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as the lamb is silent before his shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants for his life was taken from the earth? And the eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. And they rode along and they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? And he ordered the carriage to stop and they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and the eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. And me meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north in another town, preaching the good news there as well. You talk about an adventure. And so I believe that God has a sense of adventure that he plants in us when we receive Jesus and we become discipled in the Lord. I wanna talk about that and maybe answer the question, do you wanna go on an adventure with God? If you do, focus your attention on people. The first thing that Philip did was this. He met the Ethiopian. You got to meet people. Now, have you noticed that in our crazy world, that sometimes people become an obstacle to overcome rather than someone to meet. I'm guilty, I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself at this point, that has happened to me. It says, Philip started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia. He stopped long enough to see this guy as someone he wanted to talk to. He was not an obstacle to overcome, he was someone he wanted to meet. Now, something really cool happened. It says the eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship. If you will go on an adventure with the Holy Spirit and focus your attention on people, what the Holy Spirit will often do for you is set up meetings for you with people that are already seeking to know more about God. You see this Ethiopian eunuch, he had traveled to Jerusalem. I mean, from Ethiopia, hello, that's a journey. So he had traveled there to, to find out more about God, but he wasn't 
getting his need met. So God set up a meeting between him and Philip, and Philip was available because he was looking to focus his attention on people. Let me illustrate what happened uh, and uh, something that happened in my own life. Um, some years ago, I had a neighbor that um, while I was out planting my spring flowers, he came over and just started talking to me. And the thing I remember about that, I kept on planting flowers and he was talking. It was all good. He was an older man. But I had one of my children there and they actually looked at my neighbor and asked them this question. They said, why are you over here? <laughs> and of course, I was just a little bit embarrassed by this. And I said, well, well son, he's over here to meet us and to talk and get to know us. <laughs> and of course, the neighbor just laughed at this. And I realized at that moment, oh boy, maybe I need to train my children. It's a good thing to meet somebody and for them to come over and just make conversation. So do you want to go on an adventure with God? Focus your attention on people. They're not an obstacle to overcome. They're a person you want to meet. The second thing that Philip did really well was he walked beside people. Notice that the scripture says, the Holy Spirit told Philip, go over and walk beside the carriage. You know, it's one thing to meet people. It's another thing to say, I will walk beside you and go on your journey. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that every person is on a journey to meet Jesus Christ? I do. If you believe that every person is on a journey to meet Jesus Christ, that means it's worth going alongside them to get on that journey with them. Let me tell you what that looked like with my, uh, my neighbor. We actually planted a garden on his in his backyard because he had a ready-made situation and we decided to share crop with them. My kids and I, we worked the gardens and then we gave them some of the produce and we got to know them from that. And you know what? Out of that experience, he let us borrow this German made pellet rifle that was the most amazing thing ever. It had a scope. This was not no pellet rifle you buy at Walmart. I mean, this thing like felt like a rifle. It had a scope because we had a rabbit problem. And so I started checking out and using the scope and I learned I could take a rabbit out with this pellet gun at 50 yards. And we would talk about it, but he told me how this pellet rifle was given to him. And it was a precious moment to him and how precious it was to lend it to me for just the common experience of shooting this pellet rifle. Of course, he was older, so it wasn't good for him, but, but I got alongside him on his journey and then now well, we've got something in common. I know what, what it was like for him and that I was shooting his pellet rifle with him. So the walk alongside people on their journey to Jesus. And then the last thing that Philip did so very well was this. He asked and answered their questions. Let's look at this. Philip ran over to the man who was reading from the prophet Isaiah and Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? You know, when we ask a question, it reveals that we care. And so sometimes we have to care enough to ask the question and people I have found will show more intent, um, they'll listen more intently if would they genuinely believe that we care? By the way, let me tell you something about that I genuinely care about and I'm looking for partners that will also genuinely care with us. We're really excited that this year, we've got a bunch of youth in our youth group that have never really experienced church before, haven't heard the gospel, aren't sure they believe in the Bible yet, haven't met Jesus yet. And we're trying to make it possible for them to go to youth camp this year for $50. Now, the deal is it, it, it takes an average of $230 to send one of these kids to camp. So what that means is 
that we are trying to raise funds to sponsor these kids. And so if you would like to give towards that, to genuinely care, I call it home missions for these youth who've never met Jesus and they don't know what the Bible is. It's home missions. If you'd like to give to that, you can log on to our website at abundant.us forward slash give and just do the little youth camp drop down and give towards that. It's We're trying to raise $10,000 by this taping. We should have about half of it raised or more, but we're trying to raise about $10,000 to send 40 of these kids to youth camp and we just want to encourage you to give if you want to get involved in that way as a way of showing I genuinely care for these kids souls so Philip cared and he cared enough to ask the question and answer his questions and then in Acts 8 35 it says so beginning with the scripture that the Ethiopian was reading Philip told him the good news about Jesus if you want to go on an adventure with God and focus on people, at some point, you have to do what I call drop the J-bomb. And the reason for this is, is that Jesus is the answer to the problems that they have. Jesus is what they're seeking. The Holy Spirit is inspiring them to seek Jesus. So at some point in there, you've got to drop the J-bomb. You've got to say the word Jesus. And when you say the word Jesus, that gives them opportunity to experience Jesus like you have. Notice that Philip told him the good news about Jesus. Let me close with an illustration that happened to me from my neighbor. Uh, what happened to us was unfortunately that pellet rifle that we borrowed, my son had some friends over and they broke the rifle. Oh, it was so humbling I had to take this pellet rifle, a German-made pellet rifle back over to my neighbor and say, it's broken. I'm so sorry. I offered to pay for it. And he said, no, I, I don't want you to pay for this. But what he did do is he invited me into his home and he began to share with me. He said, so I'm dying of cancer and the doctors tell me I don't have very long left. And we're sitting on his couch and he's telling me this story. And I, of course, say, I am so sorry to hear this. Can I pray with you? And when I said those words, I watched my neighbor get off the couch, on his knees, and fold his hands in a perfect prayer position. I was a little embarrassed because I'm left on the couch, lounging, relaxing. That's how I was going to pray. He got down on his knees, ready to pray, folded hands, ready to go, yep. That's pretty. <laughs> so I just imitated. That's a good thing to do. I imitated what he did. I got off the couch, got on my knees, folded my hands, <laughs> prayed next to the couch as well. And we prayed right there. And he got his deepest desire. He wanted to get right with God before he died. And he made sure he was right with God right there and right then. He did die of cancer a few months later, but he died right with God, with Jesus as his Lord and Savior. You know what also happened is that his widow continued to live next door for a while. Me and my kids were involved with her. She was a precious lady. I mean, my kids, they painted her house. She hired them to paint her house. We, we would fellowship with her. And then ultimately, when it was time for her to move closer to her own children so they could take care of her, we actually helped her move. We got involved with these with, with her precious lady and her husband had received the Lord. She experienced the love of Jesus as well. So do you want to go on an adventure with God? Focus your attention on people and God will lead you on an amazing adventure. There are some discussion questions for your small group. I encourage you to uh, look through those discussion questions and, uh, and be edified by them.